Welcome to your monthly update on the Covidence UK study. My name is Adrian Martineau and I'm the Chief Investigator of the study based at Queen Mary University of London. Well, June 2022 now marks two years since you completed your first monthly follow-up questionnaire, if you are among the 10,000 or so people who signed up back in May 2020. And I thought that in today's webinar, I would review some of the uh, achievements and discoveries we've made in the last year and then talk about uh, a new initiative that we're undertaking to consult with Covidence UK participants and get your views on which scientific directions you'd like us to take in the year ahead. So just to review progress, uh, the first 12 months of this study were very much focused on recruitment, building a study that was large enough to be powered to answer the scientific questions we wanted to ask and also to investigating risk factors for COVID-19 and running the antibody tests before the first wave of vaccines was rolled out. The second 12 months of the study uh, then focused on three main areas. First of all, responses to vaccination. Second, evaluating the impact of COVID-19. And third, working on the randomised control trial, which investigated whether or not vitamin D supplements would have a role in protecting against COVID-19. Let me run past you uh, what I think are probably the 10 most important discoveries we've made in the last 12 months, thanks to all the data that you've shared with us. I think the first one relates perhaps to the uh, rollout of the initial vaccine programme. Uh, and the two key discoveries I think that we made of prime importance were comparing the effects of vaccination with two doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and comparing that to receiving two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. What we found was that COVID-19 UK participants who received Pfizer were more likely to develop antibodies after vaccination than those who received AstraZeneca. Um, and they also had better protection against breakthrough COVID-19 in the months immediately following uh, COVID-19 vaccination. We also did a study following up participants after they received booster doses, and we showed that booster doses of either Pfizer or Moderna, both RNA vaccines, were effective in generating antibody responses in people who didn't respond to their primary course of two doses of vaccination. When we looked at factors which affected uh, the effectiveness of vaccines, we were relieved to see that vaccines cancelled out a large number of risk factors that we previously described as increasing people's susceptibility to severe COVID-19. One of these was the ethnic variation in COVID-19 susceptibility that we described. So we found out that vaccines cancelled out the excess risk of COVID-19 in people of South Asian heritage. And in fact, people of South Asian heritage had higher antibody responses to vaccination than white people. We also found that vaccines cancelled out the excess risk of COVID-19 in people who were overweight. And we also found that those people who were overweight had higher antibody responses to vaccination than people who were not overweight. Another programme of work related to describing the symptoms of uh, the uh, reactive symptoms following vaccination against COVID-19. We found that post-vaccination symptoms, both local in the arm and systemic in terms of fatigue, fever and tiredness, uh, were common and they associated with higher antibody levels after vaccination. When we measured those antibody levels after vaccination, then linked them to people's risk of getting COVID-19 down the line, we found, as predicted, that the higher levels of antibody did indeed associate with better protection against breakthrough COVID-19. We then moved on to do a programme of work relating to the impact of COVID-19 on people's health and wealth. And the first of these studies, we showed that COVID-19 increased participants' risk of reporting insufficient household income and sickness absence from work during the first 12 months of the pandemic. We also did studies focusing on our participants who have asthma, some 2,000 people within the study. We showed that COVID-19 was a trigger for asthma attacks, but it didn't really carry an increased risk compared to other viral respiratory infections. And reassuringly, we went on to show that the Omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2 was no more likely to trigger an asthma attack than earlier variants of the virus, as had been feared. Finally, analysis of the Coronavit trial revealed 
disappointingly, that vitamin D supplements did not seem to offer protection against COVID-19. So all of these uh, results have now been submitted for publication and uh, many of them have now appeared in peer reviewed journals. But in addition to their scientific value uh, and their publication value, they had impact in real time in that they were forwarded both to the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies and to the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition so that your data and the findings from it were basically able to inform UK public health policy in a timely way. So we're two years in, but it's no time to rest on our laurels. I think there are two major issues still ongoing. The first is that COVID has not gone away. Indeed, uh, predictions in the last week are that we are about to uh, experience uh, a new wave of COVID-19. But in addition, and very importantly, uh, there are large numbers of people in the country and within COVID in UK who are still experiencing prolonged consequences of having had COVID-19. And this is going to be a major focus of our work in the year ahead. So what do we have planned for the next 12 months? As I said, our primary focus is going to be on long COVID. We want to know what is the natural history of long COVID? What makes it better? What makes it worse? Another area where we want to focus relates to the effects of SARS-CoV-2 vaccines. We want to know how long protection lasts from the current vaccine regimens. We need to know which vaccine type works for longest. And we need to find out how vaccines will perform if and when new variants of SARS-CoV-2 arise. We're also interested in exploring the effects of face masks, answering questions such as can face masks protect the wearer as well as their content, contacts against SARS-CoV-2 infection? And which type of face mask works best? But above all, in this webinar, I want to canvas your thoughts about what you think we should be asking in the year ahead. We're we asking the questions that matter most to you. What scientific questions would you like us to address? How would you like to see your data being used in the next year? And what are we doing well? And what could we be doing better? We would really welcome your thoughts and input on these questions and any other comments that you would like to share with us. So please drop us an email to covidence at qmul.ac.uk. That's covidence at qmul.ac.uk. And we look forward to hearing from you and learning what your wishes are for the year ahead for our scientific research. All that remains for me to say is thank you for another year of your dedicated commitment in sharing your data with us. We hope you agree that this has been a valuable exercise and we look forward to working together with you in the year ahead to continue to advance understanding of COVID-19. Goodbye.